Hello all! With this video I want to present one book which would be very beneficial if you are preparing or if you are going to take an AWS Machine Learning Specialty exam. I am talking about AWS Certified Machine Learning Specialty MLS C01 Certification Guide written by Somanath Nanda and Wesley Mora. I got this book just a couple of weeks ago and I'm still reading it. And keeping in mind that I have passed this exam in February 2021, you can check my special video where I am talking about this experience. I think I can imagine how this book could help to prepare for the exam if I had this book before. This book is released in March 2021, quite new content which reflect not the actual exam itself only, but it corresponds to what actually you should know in daily basis working with AWS and machine learning project. In this video, I will go quickly to each section and tell you what I would use for the exam preparation, what I like and not. So, let's go! Firstly, let's talk about the content and the first section. First of all, let's take a look into the content and how this book is structured. This book contains more than 300 pages and 9 sections. The book starts with machine learning fundamentals, where you will refresh your knowledge about artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning and basically data science. I mean, they will find some concept of these domains including how to use specific algorithms, approaches into solving common problems, and not to answer exam questions only, but how to use it in practice. One of these are overfitting, underfitting, cross-validation, bootstrapping methods and even more. What I like in the structure of this book, by the end of each section you will find 10 questions that you will must answer and know the context behind before the actual exam. The correct answers are presented with clear explanation and references where you can find more. So in simple words, my advice, few days before your actual exam, go through each section questions and answers to get good feeling before your final day. The second section explains about AWS application services for artificial intelligence and machine learning. Let's take a look at the first page in this chapter and read. In this chapter we will learn about the AWS artificial intelligence services for building chatbots, advanced text analysis, document analysis, transcription and so on. This chapter has been designed in such a way that you can solve different use cases by integrating AWS AI services and get an idea of how they work. AWS is growing every day and they are adding new AI services time after time. So stop for one second and think what the services this chapter is talking about. There will be Amazon recognition to analyze images and videos, Amazon Poly to text to solve speech problems, Amazon Transcribe to solve speech to text problems, Amazon Comprehend for NLP implementation, Amazon Translate for translate documents, Amazon Texttrack to extract text from documents, and Amazon Lex to create a chat box. If you take a look in this section, here you'll find a specific use case for each service, all features that you should keep in mind using it in practice and in your actual exam. The authors explain not the mentioned service itself, but they extended the context by introducing you how the service works in combination with other AWS services to solve specific problems. For example, Amazon Poly with CloudWatch or S3 storage service, or AWS Lambda integration for business problems. In my experience, I got about 10 tricky questions at least corresponding to some of these services. So my advice, do not skip this section. It is about data engineering and exploratory data analysis. And this section describes how to prepare data for machine learning. It explains different techniques for data manipulation and transformation according to each type of variable. Additionally, it covers the handling of missing data and outliers. So the section contains the following chapters. Data preparation and transformation, understanding and visualizing data, AWS services for data storing, AWS services for processing. Personally, for me, as having 4 years experience in data science and machine learning, data transformation preparation and visualization parts are so well known, so in my case I would pay a special attention to services for data storing and services for processing. In this section you will learn about identifying types of features, dealing with categorical features, dealing with numerical features, data normalization and standardization. Do not mix it in the practice and in your exam. Look at very well prepared graphs here, it explains a lot of for you itself. Understanding data distribution, there you will learn about Bernoulli, binomial and Poisson distributions. I remember I got some questions in terms of these domains. Handling missing values, dealing with outliers, again do not skip graphs here, they explains a lot. Next to that, unbalanced datasets, really often problem in data science and machine learning. 
Then, dealing with the text data, there you will learn about TF, IDF, term frequency and inverse term frequency, word embedding, word vector principles, and even more. And do not skip and do not forget to take a look into the special notes across the pages. There are presented an important information for a specific domain you must know. Section number 4. Understanding and visualizing data. Yes, this section is all about data visualization and what you can get from it. This is a little bit different section that I will want because it is not focusing on AWS environment as the main goal, but reminds you and explain the main concept how you should visualize your unique situation in daily basis. On the exam, you will get a few questions at least where you will be asked with targeting some kind of visualization. Few simple topics in this section are visualization in relationship in your data, visualization comparison in your data, visualization composition in your data, Visualization distribution in your data, that is most important you should know, I think. Building key performance indicator, KPI, this is also you properly get at least few questions in the exam. Introducing quick side, the last, but the one of the most important topics you must to know because many AWS services are directly connected with quick side. With this section you will be introduced to bar chart, stack column chart. Column charts also how to visualize metrics of some classifiers, such as AdaBoost, Random Forest, Logistic Regression and more. This is what you should pay a special attention because I am sure you get at least few questions will provide some kind of visualization during the exam. You should know how to quickly generate visualization on different machine learning algorithms metrics to compare them. During my exam, I got questions asking me to select a type of visualization to given situation. While on a previous section you are being introduced about main concept about data distributions, here you will learn how to visualize it. And last thing in this section is QuickSight. It is a cloud-based analytics service that allows you to build data visualization and ad hoc analysis. This service supports data sources such as Redshift, Aurora, Athena, RDS and your on-premise database solution. Ok, let's go to section number 5, it's about AWS services for data storing. AWS provides a wide range of services to store your data safely and securely. There are various storage options available on AWS such as block storage, file storage and object storage. On the exam, there is a significant amount of question directly related with data storing based on very different conditions. Once questions asking you to select the most cheaper storage solution, others asking you to find solution to store a data that are used only in special cases, and even the question can ask you question how to manage and encrypt your data internally or externally of AWS environment. This is one of the most important sections in this book and covers following topics. Storing data on Amazon S3, controlling access on S3 bucket and object, protecting data on Amazon S3, Securing S3 object at rest and in transit, using our type of data stores, relational database services, managing failover in Amazon RDS, taking automatic backup and snapshots, writing data to Amazon Aurora, using Amazon Redshift, and Amazon DynamoDB for NoSQL as a service. Please take a special attention to S3 bucket policy, bucket versioning and encryption. I got several questions during the exam for these domains. Yes, this list is quite long and you never know what situation you will get on the exam. So I recommend read this section carefully and come back here time after time you read other section or chapters in this book. Ok, go next to section number 6. AWS services for data processing. Previous section was about how to store the data while the section is focusing on how to gain insight from your data in AWS environment. Here you will be introduced by such keywords as Data Query, AWS Elastic Map Reduce, AWS Glue, AWS Kinetic Data Stream, ETL, Athena, Redshift and even much more. Let's look what this section is about in more structural way. Using Glue for designing ETL jobs, querying S3 data using Athena, streaming data through AWS Kinesis Data Streams and storing it using Kinesis Firehose, ingesting data from on-premise location to AWS migrating data to AWS and extending on-premise data centers to AWS, proceeding data on AWS. I want to stop here a little bit, think again about these points. As I have passed this exam recently, I am sure I can confirm that these points together with data storing functionality is one of the main domain in the actual exam. You must know differences between glue and firehose, between AWS storage and on-premise data centers. You must know concepts of ETL, 
and you probably get a significant amount of questions about Kinesis family products. So, my advice, read this chapter carefully and try introduce functionality on AWS yourself. Not all the things, but just these ones where you feel you need to know. Again, AWS Glue, Kinesis, Athena and Batch, they are top level products from AWS the exam is about. On the top of that, be familiar with real data streaming, this is what Kinesis product is about. On the top of that, you will get a few questions targeting to some specific data processing services such as Snowball, DataSync or Elastic File System. Keep it in mind and look very seriously into this section. Ok, go to section number 7. It's uh, data modeling. If you go sequentially through the sections of this book, before reading this section you should be familiar with many AWS services and how be ready to move to modeling phase by using machine learning algorithms. Having a good sense of different types of algorithms and machine learning approaches will put you in a very good position to make decisions during your project and answering tricky questions during your actual machine learning specialty exam. And here is what you will get a good sense about in terms of AWS can bring benefit. I mean, storing the training data, ensemble models, regression and classification models, forecasting models, object vector, clustering, animal detection, dimensionality reduction, IP insights, NLP and reinforcement learning. And from this moment you enter to the world of AWS SageMaker. During reading this book, I was always waited when the authors will introduce you to this. I think the most important service in AWS for data scientists. And here is it. My advice, do not rush in reading this section. Saying shortly, if you know SageMaker logic, you probably pass the exam. If not, certainly not pass. So take a deep breath and let's go. You will hear a term of SageMaker many times till the end of this book. Also, a long concept of SageMaker you will be introduced in data format using in AWS, pipe mode, factorization machines, deep AR for multiple time series forecasting and more. It is like a mix of AWS functionality in terms of SageMaker and the concept of common machine learning algorithm principles, but integrated in more practical approach with AWS SageMaker and AWS algorithm you must know before actual exam. I remember I got approximately dozen questions during my exam about factorization machines, deep AR and deploying models on AWS SageMaker, dimensionality reduction, object detection and anomaly detection. This is what and not only this section is about. And the questions at the end of this section are very good prepared. Do not skip it. Now let's go to section number 8, evaluating and optimizing models. Now, let's continue our journey through AWS SageMaker and machine learning models. Bring the best knowledge to your specialty exam from here also. And in this section you will learn how to evaluate your machine learning models with AWS SageMaker, evaluating classification and regression models and model optimization topic. Please pay attention to special notes and do not forget what is the model drift, cross-validation, proportions of training and test set and very 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 important, confusion matrix. Read this part very carefully. You must know how to calculate precision, recall, F1 score, what these metrics mean to your model. During the exam, you will get a real life situation and you need to select a correct answer with specified metrics which describe the problem the best. Or you will get a confusion matrix and must to calculate one of these metrics just in brains without any calculator. Along this, you must to bring knowledge about ROC, ROC curves, grid search, regression and classification metrics to the exam, such like true positive, false negative and so on. So read carefully this, make your own notes and do it many times. Come back again time after time to this section by reading this book. And now it is the last section in this book, is section number 9, Amazon SageMaker Modeling. Now I understand why the authors put SageMaker at the end of this book. Without knowledge about machine learning concepts, machine learning algorithms, metrics, machine learning problems, data visualization, you will not able to fully use SageMaker functionality to deploy and scale your project to production. That is what as a professional data scientist or machine learning engineer must be able to do. Here you will go through SageMaker instances, instances types, lifecycle configuration, Git repositories, training jobs, hyperparameters tuning jobs, compilation jobs, endpoints, batch transform jobs and related topics. Did you know that exist different strategies for hyperparameters tuning? 
Yes, and you can get this kind of question on your actual exam as well. Also, pay a special attention to the permission and encryption your data. Security is one of the priority in AWS. So look at this. Also read about instance type, which depends on your data volume, specific problem, expectation, and our criteria. There are six different instance type families, which differ with their properties. That is very important if you get question asking to find the most effective and least expensive solution to your specific problem. What I'm reading right now, creating alternative pipelines with Lambda function. Remember, what Lambda can do, what features Lambda function has, and cases where Lambda could be used and where not. That are the main points, but not all. Check it yourself. Now, it is a final word from me in this video and uh, I want to summarize what I tell you. I went through all the sections and I hope now you will be a better feeling what you expect from this book if you are in preparation for AWS Machine Learning Specialty Exam. I passed this exam in 2021 in February with a score of almost 900. Please ask me if you have some specific question. Check my other video where I explain details about the exam itself. And again about this book, only a couple of things what I think could be improved. And the first thing is one extra section for security issues and one extra section about the actual exam. Then if I compare electronic book with paper version, some pictures printing quality could be improved also, but electronic version solve it again. The structure of this book is very well prepared. I think I could save at least one or two months in my preparation if I could have this book before. So if you ask my personal opinion, I highly recommend to take this book and invest your time in your preparation. That will be a good solution, which will direct you to good path and save significant time before your exam. Combine this book with your internet courses and focus not only to the exam itself only, but look globally and have fun with AWS. And final word from me is never stop learning, bye bye and see you on the next video.